got a kind of annoyed at these books, especially the last one. But this book turned it all around. I loved this book to pieces. Because up to this point, I was annoyed with the series because it felt like the characters were getting into a rut. They never had more characterization or the status quo never got shaken up. But finally here, it was like everything clicked. And suddenly, I love these books again. It made me excited to continue the series. And this book is just Mercy Thompson perfection. If I had to name my favorite book in the series so far, this would be it. For a bunch of reasons, of which I will tell you now. This was a great book for Adam because he actually changed, but we also got to see a better side of his weaknesses because in this book, his ex-wife came to town and we got to see exactly why she is the ex. <laughs> She's totally manipulative because Adam has this great drive to care for people and to protect them and she's always manipulating that and making herself seem like the victim over and over. And it was just the perfect way to push Adam's buttons to make him have to grow out of his weaknesses a little bit in order to confront his ex-wife. And I loved that Mercy was able to help him do it. Like, isn't that what marriage is supposed to be? And it was a great contrast to see Adam and Christie's relationship and Adam and Mercy's relationship, the current marriage. Because you can see that in Adam and Christie's relationship, it was always about Adam taking care of Christie. But now it goes both ways. And Christy is the perfect new protagonist for Mercy. Because Mercy is good at fighting in two ways. One, the total kick butt fighting. And two, the sneaky prank fighting. We keep getting these little hints of all the pranks that Mercy pulled on the head honcho werewolf Bran in her childhood. And I just want to continue having these stories because every time we get a new one, it is so delicious. But now Mercy has an antagonist that she can't just kick in the face and stab. It is an antagonist that she can't even be overtly angry with because then she's just like the bitter current wife at the ex-wife and she doesn't want to be seen as petty, but she still wants to get back at her. And I love at the end of this book, Mercy finally just stoops to the prank level because she's tried everything else and she can't fight Christy off any other way. So she dyes Christy's hair blue and it was just perfect for Mercy's character and for her finally breaking free of this idea that she has to be the perfect person who's always kind. No, that's your antagonist. You are allowed to antagonize the ex-wife after she has antagonized you for an entire book. It was so cathartic to read because Christy deserved that. And that's the coyote side of Mercy, the little bit of a prankster. And I really like seeing that because it definitely sets her apart from other protagonists. It really shows one of the main themes of this book, which is kind of choosing to belong. Because Mercy has two different types of people telling her that she doesn't belong. She's got the, you don't belong as Adam's wife because I was his last wife. And then she also has, you don't belong in this werewolf pack. And she's fighting off both. And I love that in the end, she's able to not completely refute the arguments set against her, but she is able to show that they're pretty invalid by dyeing Christy's hair blue, so Christy stops challenging her, and two, taking the authority of the pack and bringing Hoel into the werewolf pack without checking with anyone else in order to save the day. Showing that she won, she's competent of saving the day, and two, yeah, she does belong in the werewolf pack, and she's going to use that authority however she wants to. Which shows one of the big themes of this book, which is having people care for you and you caring for others, and how that makes a toxic relationship build up. Because we see that between Adam and Christy, that the caring only goes one way, toxic relationship. And we can even see this with Gary and Coyote, <laughs> which is a toxic relationship. I feel like Coyote is caring for Gary in his own way, but Gary does not accept it or reciprocate. And so their relationship is just, just terrible. And the caring for people comes back even to the end when the walking stick comes back, when Mercy needs a walking stick to literally walk, which I also loved. Um, and I love that her and the walking stick also care for each other. It's just one more beautiful relationship in this book. You know what wasn't a beautiful relationship in this book? Um, the new pack member, Zach. So out of the blue, there's this new pack member. He says a few lines. He does a few things. I understand his main purpose of being in this book was to show how a new person could be brought into the werewolf pack so that at the end of the book, when Mercy brought Hoel into the werewolf pack, it wasn't super surprising. But still, 
He felt just kind of out of place in this book. This is pretty much my only complaint of this book was the inclusion of Zack. And honestly, part of it is that I don't believe that he'll be useful in future books. He'll just be, you know, pack member 34 who says a few lines in the background probably, which is sad that they're just introducing new characters when it feels like they can't even give all the characters that already exist good screen time. And this isn't a thing that I noticed until now that was important. The more I think about it, the more important it seems is that when something's introduced, it should be used in at least two things. Because Zack is really only used for one big storyline, which is how to bring new people into the pack. He kind of touches on a few other ones, but he could have been taken out with barely any change. So he just kind of felt out of place. But if he had been more involved in one of the other storylines, it would have been totally fine.